Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau and today I want to show you how you can implement your own list-like object in Python. Now with that I mean that a list, a normal list in Python supports all kinds of uh, convenient uh, syntax, right? For example, you can put an index between square brackets to get an element from your list. You can use in to check whether something is in the list. You can use len to check how long your list is, etc. And uh, normally, if you create your own object, you cannot use those kinds of syntax, uh, that kind of Python syntax. But you can do it if you implement particular kind of special magic functions or dunder functions. So here I want to show you how you can do that, how you can create your own list-like object. Now, what are we going to create? Our list-like object is going to be a model of the ASAP mob. Now, um, and our model of the ASAP mob will support a length. The length will be the number of members in the mob. Uh, we want to be able to check with the in keyword whether a particular member is in the ASAP mob or not. And we are going to add, add a little twist to show that you can really customize how list objects work or how your cus custom list-like objects work. Namely, whenever we take a look at a member from the ASAP mob, that member goes solo because as soon as a member gets a little bit of attention, he goes solo and he is then removed from the mob. So if you get a member from the mob, the size of the mob reduces by one. That's the behavior that we want. So here we start, to start with, we have a list of all the ASAP mob members. And of course, as if this is just a regular Python list. So the first step that we're going to do is to turn this into an object, turn this into a class rather. A class is a definition. And if you create an instance of a class, you have an object. Um, now I'm going to assume that you know a little bit about object oriented programming. So the way we do it, we say ASAP, class ASAP mob. You see that I'm using the Python convention of, of using uh, camel case, so uppercase words uh, for class names. Now in our class, we need an init function. Uh, and the init function you probably know, and that's already a magic method, magic function. It's already a function that has a special meaning for Python because it's always called when you create an instance of your object. Uh, and it's a called a dunder function because its name starts with two underscores, a double underscore. And to make that a bit easier to pronounce, you call that a, we call that a dunder function. So dunder init. Now, what does our initialization function do? Well, it is very simple. It simply uh, does this. Self dot underscore members is this list. All right, so I'm going to assume that you know that self refers to the object itself, right? And then dot members refers to the members property of that object, which we're going to initialize here. And I'm again using the Python convention uh, of pre prefixing the name members with an underscore to indicate that this is kind of like a private property of our object. You're not supposed to access it from the outside. It's for internal use only, even though Python doesn't enforce that, right? It's just a convention. Um, so. Now, once we've done that, we can create an instance of this class. We can create an object simply like this, right? A set mob up. If I run this, it works. It doesn't do anything, but it works. Now, the first thing that we want to be able to do is see how many members there are in the A set mob. So we want to be able to do this. Uh, there are, oh, there are percentage sign D for number uh, members in the A set mob and then we want to be able to do this in a very pythonic way by saying len and then asap mob now if i run this we will get an error a type error and the type error says that asap mob has no length how can we give our asap mob a length well we can do that by implementing a special magic function or dunder function namely dunder len now, and this function is very simple. It simply needs to return an integer that is the length of our, of our uh, object. So what I'm going to do is say return uh, length self dot members, right? Very straightforward. If I run this now, you see it says there are 15 members in the ASAP mob. Okay. Now what we also want to do is check, uh, get members from our ASAP mob. We want to be able to do this, right? Print uh, percentage sign s for a string goes solo and then we want to be able to say asap mob 
and between square brackets, for example, zero. What this should do is that this should give us the first member of ASAP mob at position zero, right? Position zero is the first member, and that should correspond to ASAP end. And then ASAP end should be returned here, so right? So we should get ASAP end goes solo. And at the same time, ASAP end should be removed from the ASAP mob so that the size of our ASAP mob uh, decreases by one. That's the behavior that we want, right? So if we then print out afterwards, we want to see that there are now only 14 members. There are now only 14 members in ASAP mob. So that's what we want to see. Of course, if I run this now, it will crash. Get a type error, ASAP mob object, ASAP mob object does not support indexing. In other words, Python does not know what to do with this. So how can we support indexing? How can we support this kind of square bracket syntax for our ASAP mob object? Well, we can do that by implementing the dunder get item function, which takes a key. And the key corresponds in this case to the zero, to whatever we pass between the square brackets. In other words, this is simply, this will simply translate to a function call of get item. Now, what does get item do? Well, it should basically say, okay, uh, return self.members.pop key. So pop will take a member at position key, remove it from the members list, and return it. So that's exactly what we want to do, right? Essentially, we want to have this function as a pop. Uh, we'll make it a little bit more fancy by saying, okay, we want really want key to be an integer, otherwise this doesn't work. So if is instance uh, key comma int, this is what we want to do. Oh. So else uh, raise type error cannot get key Okay, now if I run this, you will see that it works. There are 15 members in the ASAP mob, ASAP end goes solo, and afterwards there are now only 14. Oh, there are now only, oh, typo, now only 14 members in the ASAP mob. If I do ASAP mob at position minus one, which will be the last one, right? We will get uh, ASAP trash panda, because we will get ASAP trash panda, but we still get only 14 members. If I pass something that is not an integer, such as, for example, x, we get type error uh, cannot get key x, right? And that's the error that we raise ourselves here, right? So we've, we've sort of made our uh, get item function well behaved so that it gives a useful error message if we make a mistake. But this works, right? So we already have an object that more or less functions kind of like a list. Now, what we also want is uh, to be able to check whether a particular member is in the ASAP mob. So what we want to be able to do is this. If ASAP Sebi, that's me, that's my ASAP mob name, is in ASAP mob, print Sebi is in the mob, else print Sebi is not in the mob. So what kind of behavior do we want? Well, I am unfortunately not a part of the ASAP mob, so we wanted to print out Sebi is not in the mob. But we don't want the length of our, of our mob to be affected, right? So we want to have, there are 15 members in the ASAP mob, Sebi is not in the mob, and then there are now only 15 members in the ASAP mob, right? Only so, only slash still 15 members in the ASAP mob. That's the behavior what we want, but if I run it, oh, uh, I made a typo. If, oh, not, not is in, but simply in, it says there are 15 members in ASAP mob, Sebi is not in the mob, which is correct. There are now only slash still seven members in ASAP mob. Now that's weird, right? Why did, this, why did the size of our mob decrease and why did it decrease to seven? Well, that's because what is happening now is that Python will use the get item function to retrieve, uh, to check whether Sebi is part of the mob. And the first time it will check with the key of zero and it will find out that ASAP end at position zero is not actually uh, in is not equal to Sebi, so uh, it will decide that, that Sebi is not in the mob. Then check ASAP Barry, etc. Now every time that get item is called, the size of the mob decreases by one, right? So while the key increases by one, the size of the mob decreases by one, and once there are only seven members left, the key will be <laughs> higher than the length of the mob, and Python will decide that Sebi is not in the mob. That if you, if you want, pause the video and take a moment to figure out that this is actually what happens and that this makes logical sense. 
Uh, but for the purpose of, of this video, it's not that important. What is more important is that this is absolutely not the behavior that we want. And we want to be able to control what happens when we use the in operator. And we can do that. What we can do is implement uh, a dunder contains function. So we can say dev dunder contains self comma member. So if we define this dunder contains function, Python will use it whenever we use in, right? So if we use the in operator here, if we don't define this contains function, Python will fall back to using the get item function in combination with len to check how long the, how long the iterator is, um, right? So, and that is a general property of how these magic functions work. Uh, usually it, you, if you can, usually if you don't implement a more specific function like contains, Python will fall back to using more generic functions like get item. Right, so you can control the behavior in, in different ways through implementing implementing different kinds of dunder functions. Uh, all of which are perfectly well documented on the Python documentation, I should say. Now, how does our contains function work? Well, what we simply do return member, right? In self dot underscore members. So what will happen is we say if ASAP Sebi is in ASAP mob, it will translate to a function call to contains and the member will be ASAP Sebi. That's how it works. So if I run this, you will see that now we get the behavior that we want. There are 15 members in the ASAP mob. Sebi is not in the mob. And there are now only still 15 members in the ASAP mob, right? So this works. We've implemented the in operator. Now we're going to implement one final thing. And here things become a little bit technical. We're going to implement iteration. So we're going to implement a for loop. So what we want to be able to do is this for member in ASAP mob print the member. So we want to uh, print out the name of the member. Now, every time that we get a member from the ASAP mob, that member should go solo. So what the behavior that we want is that we initially print out, there are 15 members of the, in the ASAP mob. Then we print out 15 members name, member names, and then we print out there are now only zero members in the ASAP mob. That's what we want. But let's take a look at what actually happens. So initially it's cool. There are 15 members in the ASAP mob. Then we print out eight member names. And then we end up with an ASAP mob that is still has still has seven members in it. So what's happening here is that Python is again falling back to using get item, uh, starting at position zero, incrementing the key every time that it gets a member, the size of the mob will decrease. Then at some point uh, the key will be higher uh, than the length of the length of the members list, and Python will stop with the iteration. So again. The details don't really matter. It's an, it's an interesting, uh, interesting mental exercise to figure out for yourself that that is in the, indeed what happens. But the main point is here, here is that we actually don't want this kind of iteration behavior. This is absolutely not what we want. So how can we control the, how a for loop works with our, uh, our list like object with our ASAP mob? Well, we can do that by implementing a, uh, the dunder iter function. Def dunder iter self. This iter function is quite intricate. It can be implemented in different ways. And strictly speaking, formally speaking, what it does is it returns an iterator that allows you to loop through the object. In practically speaking, how it is usually implemented is through a generator function. And a generator function is a function with a yield statement. And a generator function is most easily explained by simply showing how you implement it. So that's what I will do. I will say, while self dot underscore members. So while, while the members list is not zero, while there are still members in the mob, yield oh, self dot members dot pop. So the pop, what it does is, is it gets a member from the end of the members list, removes it from the members list and returns it. That's not that easy, difficult. What does yield do? Well, yield is like a return statement. It returns that mem that popped member, <laughs> um, but it does not end the function. A return statement ends a function, right? But yield does not end the function. It merely suspends the function. And then the next time that the function is resumed, uh, it will continue from that point onwards. And that's called a generator function. And again, you can find uh, a lot of documentation on generator function on the Python documentation and also YouTube videos uh, on it. It's a very elegant technique, but it's a little bit, it, it, it requires a slight uh, change in the way you think about functions. So what is happening here? Well, this for loop essentially calls our iter function. 
what this with the iter function does it yields a member this is returned and it will be the first member in our for loop and it will be printed out then the for loop will resume this function and iter will resume pop another member yield it and that will become the second member etc 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 until there are no more members in our members list and then the iter function will end the generator will end um, so that is by subsequently yielding all the members from our uh, from our members list we create basically an iterable object and that's the iterable object that we're looping through here with this for loop that's a little bit intricate right but if you think about it it is not that difficult basically you just yield what you want to yield right you yield all the items that you want to uh, loop through and they will be eaten up in a sense in this for loop now let's let's see that this actually works if i run it you will see we get the uh, desired behavior we will start we print out all the 15 members and then we end up with only zero members in the asap mob right so this is the kind of iteration behavior that we want by looping through all of our 15 asap mob members we make all of them go solo and then the asap mob has no members anymore exactly the kind of behavior that we want so let's wrap up and see what we've done here so we have uh defined a class asap mob with an initialization function dunder in it the dunder to remind you stands for double underscore we have defined a dunder len function that returns the length of our object the number of members of our asap mob we have defined a dunder get item function that allows us to uh, get an element from our object right to get a member from our asap mob uh, based on a passing a key between the square brackets like just like you would get the element from a list then we have to find the dunder contains function that allows us to use the in operator to check whether a member is in the asap mob right to check whether sebi is part of asap mob or not and finally we have defined a dunder iter function which is a generator function a function with a yield statement that subsequently yields all the members of our mob and that subsequent yielding allows us to traverse to iterate through all the members in a for loop and print them out well here you have seen the essential ingredients of using magic dunder functions and implementing list-like behavior in your own object so with that thank you very much for your attention mm -hmm.